Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Arizona Cardinals and the New Orleans Saints. With that, let's get over to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome with a call from New Orleans. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Arizona Cardinals. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? This is fielded at the goal line. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback, the former Purdue Boilermaker. It's Drew Brees. Total relentlessness of consistency. Almost like a machine. If you watch him in practice after every throw, he resets his feet, visualizes all the other options on a play. So if he has to do it in a game, it's already there, has the muscle memory. I started calling him AI for artificial intelligence. Whatever defense does during a game, he absorbs it and then uses it against them as the game moves on. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They establish the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Second down, Kamara. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On first down, Breeze. He's got a man open. It's Cameron Meredith. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. He hits his target, left side, Watson. 
The completion good for three, and it's second down. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. leaves this one with Kamara. He'll get three up to midfield. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down on his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. From midfield, here's Breeze. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now... I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. Nothing, nothing, our score. We'll head back to New Orleans after this. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and ten. First and ten, here's Breeze. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Watson. A gain of six there on first. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Now, Breeze again. And this is going to be incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. And Lutz's kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So still no touchdowns in the first half, but we do have some action on the scoreboard with the field goal. So maybe now the mentality changes in this game because... Anytime you can get to the red zone, and if you don't come away with six points, you feel like it's a disappointment. In a game like this one, being able to kick field goals means you're right there, and then you're just looking for that big break to take you over the top.
Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. Under center, it'll be the former UCLA Bruin, Josh Rosen. In the 2018 draft, there was a lot of debate about who was the best quarterback, but there was no debate about who the best thrower was out of the group. It was Josh Rosen, able to deliver short, long, medium, with touch, throw the deep ball, you name it. He's got it in his arsenal. Rosen and the Cardinals take over with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll look to throw on first down with Josh Rosen. And Gresham has it left side. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Here we go now. Three, nine, now Rosen to throw on second down. Fitzgerald's got it right side. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. on first and ten. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. Throwing now, Rosen on first down. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Marshawn Lattimore right there on the coverage. He was draped all over it. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock the Albert away and bring up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Rosen to throw again. And Gresham's got it over the middle. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. They want to go to the air again with Rosen underneath for Johnson. A solid gain of 15 yards, and the sticks move. 
Well, they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to I didn't want it. I offer mine. You, know, you, were, you were the smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. Interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. Now does the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. For the INT, it's Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll bring up second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Ready. We're waiting. Shotgun now for Breeze. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. After the interception, here's Rosen. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Fitzgerald. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Cardinals into the red zone for the first time. They've got a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Hurry up, here we go. Green. From the gun, it's Rosen. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he's able to work it here to the 8-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Go, 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 go. 
Here's second and goal, operating from the eight-yard line. Josh Rosen. They still can't get it. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the shotgun, it's Rosen. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. And Dawson's kick is good. So we've reached halftime in a low-scoring affair, just a pair of field goals. 3-3 is our score. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Not too much to show you scoring-wise in that first half. Just a couple of field goals make up all the scoring. But the teams are ready to go at half number two. So to bring it your way, let's get right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Dances by him. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. So here's the Cardinals offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Rosen and the Cardinals take over with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They go play action here on first down. He's going to sling this deep down, and that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Cardinals. Larry Fitzgerald, 72 yards. And the Cardinals are in for six. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. That's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, Backyard. man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Here's Phil Dawson now for the point after. Dawson tacks on the point after, and the lead is now 10 to 3. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. 
One play, long touchdown pass into the end zone. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He gets it to Thomas. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. It sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. love slam routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Hey, ready. We're ready. Breeze now on first down. Complete to Watson, the tight end. And he gets it down to the 32. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Ready. Ready. From the gun, it's Breeze. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Breeze now rebounding nicely after the interception. He's hit four straight to start the drive. It's first down. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. 
Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Thomas. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Again, it's Breeze. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Man, he just ran a terrific route. Extremely hard to defend when it's run that precisely and the ball's delivered that accurately. And now a critical extra point attempt here. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again. We get a peek at Larry Fitzgerald as he heads back out there now. And I know that they double-teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Rosen and the Cardinals take over with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll make it second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here we go now. On second down, Rosen. Taken down here by the Saints. Cameron Jordan in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now let's go. Now it's Rosen. 
And Gresham has it left side. And he's able to get up here to the 26. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Here's Andy Lee now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. This is taken at the 15. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Breeze to throw. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Back to throw, Breeze. And his throw's going to be incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And it's third and short. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Four down. Ready. You ready? To throw his breeze. Looking again for Thomas, this time complete. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And this is recovered by the Cardinals. I'm fairly sure that there's no good time to cough up the football. But this couldn't be much worse, could it? No. This situation, this yard, this yard line, no chance. They set it on a tee form. They're already in field goal range here late in the fourth now. Yeah, warm up the kicker. <laughs> Just make sure they take care of the ball now. They've got a chance to put this thing away. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. They're on the outskirts of field goal range here in a tie game with a little time. So how do you handle this? What, what do you do here, Charles? Everybody wants to pick up as much yardage as possible. But the weird part is for field goal kickers, being in really close sometimes puts more pressure on them because it's much more of a position kick as opposed to just going ahead and letting it out and letting it thump. A lot of guys like a little bit of distance because you know they can handle it and it's a more natural swing of the leg. So maybe getting inside the 20, not that big of a deal. Not that huge of a deal. Sometimes that messes you up with the angles depending on which hash mark you're kicking from. Screen play, Johnson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play. Throwing now is Rosen. Incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Here we go now. Now it's Rosen. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game.
And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Andy Lee now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. So he didn't start this one the way he wanted to, but yeah, so elite, been through so many of these battles. Hard to keep him down for an extended period of time. And to demonstrate just how unusual this start was for him, our guy Marvin handed us some statistics that showed us he doesn't do this very often. What we're seeing now, though, that's what we're used to seeing. He made an adjustment, and boy, it's working really well. Back to his old form. Hey, you ready? Now Breeze. Thomas has got it, complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Breeze to throw on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. To throw, it's Breeze. Over the middle, open is Thomas. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Ready! You ready? Breeze to throw again. Airing it out deep for Smith. That's caught inside the 20. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A gain of 32 that time. And now they're going to get the timeout. A huge play has them in field goal range with a chance to win. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So it all rests now on the right leg of Will Lutz. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So it all rests now on the right leg of Will Lutz. And his kick here is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So there was a little meat on that bone, a little more than a chip shot considering the circumstances, but he's able to bang it home in what should be the game winner. And the key was getting him into a good position to kick from. I mean, if that's a 52-yarder, you're going to have some anxious moments, but kickers nowadays, you give them anything under 40, 
and they're automatic. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. On the return, it's Farrow Cooper. Well, this one, partner, was fun down to the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won, <laughs> and fun for us, because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur at the end, but what a game all the way through. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.